Welcome back, Hookaholics. Retail Red again. Uh, last time, I did one of these MTB Retail Red Elite Bass Boxes, and I thought, why the heck not? Let's, uh, let's crack into another one. It was uh, Box 8384. This time, Box 76. So, uh, the old 76er. I think that was uh, the name of the steak from uh, The Great Outdoors, John Candy. Tell me, am I right? So right after this, let's crack into this retail box. All right, so uh, if you don't know, the MTB is basically a monthly subscription package. You pay a monthly fee or an annual year yearly fee if you want to save even more money, and each month they'll give you a uh, MTB Elite or MTB Pro or MTB Regular box, which has a series of baits and items in it that uh, will get you out on the fit on the uh, on your fishing grounds and catch you some some bass or some panfish or some trout or some saltwater, whatever. They have a whole series of these boxes. But uh, recently, they've been pushing these in stores. So these are similar to the monthly, except these are direct right in your hand. You don't have to pay uh, or don't expect it each month. You get them when you want to. And uh, so far, I've opened one of these and it was actually surprising. I was impressed. So I figured, uh, why the heck not? Let's try another one, right? So the last time it was box number 84, I believe. This one is box number 76. Let's crack into it and see what MTB has to offer in their retail version of their monthly subscription style box. So uh, unlike the subscription where you, know, you and your neighbor can both get the February MTB Elite, doesn't necessarily mean both of you will have the exact same items in your MTB Elites. But with these, I am under the impression that every box 76, aside from maybe some color variants, are going to carry pretty much 99.9% .9 the same baits. Um, you, might, you might get one brand spinner bait as opposed to another brand spinner bait, but I am under the assumption, don't quote me on this, that every 76 would have, you know, for example, say there's a spinner bait, a crank bait, and a worm. You might get yum dingers in both, uh, um, uh, strike king spinner bait in both and a uh, Bill Belulus router trap in both, and, uh, you know, a KVD crankbait in both. But the color might be different in one or the other, uh, but they're going to have the same baits, just, you know, per capita. They come inside these sleeves, uh, but you have a standard old-fashioned MTB, or somewhat old-fashioned MTB. It's the standard old, standard color. It's got the modernized scroll work on it. But it's just a plain MTB box. Inside each one, like last month, you're going to get the same as the original MTBs. You'll have that ruler inside with your, uh, ooh, something's falling out already, with uh, your, uh, your little scale and some social media contests you can do. You get a little decal, another MTB decal, pretty standard. You get a little pamphlet, the what's the little dibble digest. Again, this is, these are nice. In this box, the digest includes uh, where do anglers poop, uh, why, when, and where, uh, spinning versus casting. So when you would use a casting reel versus a spinning reel, um, and how to tie the Palomar knot. There you go. So if you haven't learned how to tie a Palomar knot, there is a little pamphlet with step one, two, three, and four on tying a Palomar knot. Not bad. Not bad. That's always, you know, it's a good knot to tie. It's a good basic st a standard, uh, you know, lure tying knot. I tie blood knots. I tie, uh, the FG knot is my line to line knot all the time. Doesn't matter if I'm fishing braid to leader or uh, doing rigs where I'm tying, you know, a preset rig to my to my regular main line. 
I tend to use a, uh, an FG knot because the, it goes through guides better than any other knot I've ever been able to tie. Um, it is a little more complex, a little more technical, but it really isn't. It, once you get accustomed to it, it's a very simple, very fast knot to tie. Uh, don't, don't let uh, that kind of a, uh, a knot, or any knot, in fact, don't, don't let that persuade you from learning it because learning these knots will, will drastically improve your ability to tie different baits in different situations and have higher strength knots for applications like saltwater and you can do smaller knots for finesse work or like the FG when you have micro guides on your reels. Uh, it's something to take the time and learn. It's just like origami or any other thing. You know, take some time, learn it. It can become not just a hobby, but it can actually become an art in, in its own little way. Um, you get a what's in the box card. The difference with these as opposed to your standard MTB boxes, MTB boxes list a retail price, a sales price. These cards in, in the retail uh, purchase boxes don't have the price, but I will try after this editing, when I go to edit this, I'll try to look up the prices of these items on Shop Carls, um, maybe elsewhere, and see where I can find the price of each one, because the items in here, you pay about $44 and some change. I bought this at Dick's, and you will end up, as they say, an assessed value of up to $60 or so. So around $60. So I'm not expecting, um, you know, $80 or $100, but I'd like to see $55, $65, something in there. So first up, awesome, right off the bat. So I'm, I'm happy with this. Ooh, there's something in here I've been wanting. So we got right off the bat, Perfection Lures Pre-Rigged Nico Kit, okay? So the Pre-Rigged Nico Kit, we've had this in the, ba in the past. I know what this is. There it is, all the way at the bottom, of course. We've had this in the past. This is a different color than what I thought. This is basically a soft plastic worm in a Nico kit. I dropped the very special bait that I've been looking for. So you have these, uh, these pre-rigged worms. It comes with a weedless hook as well as a standard uh, uh, wacky rig hook. They come with the head weights already pre-molded in, and they use split rings rather than rubber O-rings as, uh, as your loop point for your wacky hook to go Nico rigging this. Um, these are awesome. I love this idea of a preset, pre-rigged pack like this. You can throw this to a youth angler or a novice angler. It's ready to go. All they have to do is tie their, their hook on uh, and loop it. This one already comes up pre-looped right there with the standard Nico uh, hook, the non-weedless version. Run that hook through the little O-ring, throw it out, just dance it around, and watch it catch fish. That's pretty cool. Uh, bubble gum is not a bad color for me. This is a little bit more red than that uh, for this one. But uh, nevertheless, I like these. These are six inch worms, pretty good size, great for bed fishing, great for cold water, uh, you know, uh, if you're running off of your electronics and fishing, Nico rigs work great. Uh, just like Wacky Rig, dangle it, dangle it in front of them, they'll bite, guaranteed. That's a cool first, uh, first bait, and I can definitely get the price on that, because they sell them on Shop Carl's. Um, next thing, Kalen's Googly Eye Swing Football Jig. This sounds familiar. I might have had these in the past as well. I've seen these. I haven't. I didn't own these, but I've seen these. All right. So these are the Rattling Googly Eye Swing Football Jigs. This is a 5 16th ounce twin pack, and these have little glass eyes, like uh, straight through glass eyes, and in those eyes is a rattling chamber, and they stapled the package. <laughs> you suckers. So these are a swing football head jig. I love these. Um, I love these more than I love shaky heads, to be honest, because these don't let the bass throw the hook as easily. So you have this free swinging football head jig, so your trailer is going to have massive amounts of mobility. Inside, you see we have these glass eyes that you can see right through, obviously not going to pick that up optically on the camera, and in the glass eye, is a rattle. 
set of rattles. So it's basically a glass rattle chamber, um, which is designed to look like the eye that they mold their lead head around and throw that swing, swing head design. This is pretty cool. I definitely like the color. That's a very sandy, muddy, rip-rap color. That would work well. Um, another natural color, so that, that would definitely go, uh, go very well with uh, natural colored soft plastic trailers, craws, uh, flukes, etc. Twin pack. I'll have to look up the price of these because I've seen these, but I haven't actually uh, owned any until now. So that's pretty cool. That's that's a helpful addition to my tackle, to my hard, um, my terminal tackle at least. I'm liking that. Five sixteenths again. The googly swing in pumpkin pepper. They call it. I wouldn't call it pumpkin pepper. Uh, I would call it like mud or something like that. It's it's definitely brown and not like a green pumpkin color. It doesn't have that green to it, the hue. Um, it doesn't have the orange to it of other pumpkin color schemes. But uh, to them, this is their pumpkin pepper. Pepper, obviously, the black splatter. So that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm very grateful to have that. Next, this bait I've been wanting. I wanted this bait because I've seen it when it was released early on uh, in recent weeks or so. Um, it's, to me, gimmicky. In a way, uh, I watched uh, B-Lat, Brian Latimer, kind of trying to dissect this new bait uh, that comes out of Biospawn called the Rattlebot. Um, evidently, it comes in eight colors, eight color variants. I think 16 total. 16 total. I think it comes in eight color varieties specific to the one, I'm going to say this very specifically, the one sound profile and eight color varieties to the other sound profile. They, di they divert this bait into two different profiles. One is the crawfish and one is the bait fish. This one I've got is the crawfish. Okay, so I'll open this up and I'll explain why I call it, I call it bullshit, BS on this. Um, the design is very innovative. It is certainly like what you'd think out of Biospawn uh, from their baits. It's very futuristic, very animatronic, very uh, mechanical and, you know, sci-fi. It is very a lot of jagged edges. Now, the one thing that Bilat said is these baits, no matter how fast you retrieve them, they will run true. They will hold their line coming through the water and rattling. It's a flat side lipless crankbait. That's basically all this is. It's weighted head forward, so it swims, you know, rattles through with this low cadence. So it's really a good uh, marry between like a blade bait uh, and a lipless crankbait, rattle trap style. They call this the craw pattern because the false eyes are back here on the back, giving you the idea that the head is here the tail is there and it's swimming backwards. They have the exact identical form factor where they put the false eyes up front here, getting dispensing with these black lines back here, exactly identical in, in shape, and it still swims the same direction, and they're, they're calling that the bait fish because the eyes are in the front as opposed to the craw, which the eyes are in the tail, or the back in this case, which would be the front of the craw because a craw swims backwards. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't blow smoke up people's butts. It's the same crankbait. It's not two separate form factors. But what I will give credit and honesty, they have two separate sound profiles. The crawfish, which is this one, has a single low thud. Their bait fish, very sharp hooks, <laughs> their bait fish profile, on the other hand, has multiple BBs. It has that one as well as smaller BBs, which makes it a lot louder, uh, faster cadence rattle. Um, that said, cold water, this is the one to go to. The, the more muted, more subtle, single thump, double tap thump, those are the baits that I go to in cold water. Uh, we're, you know, we're in February, in a few short weeks, coming around the corner, water temps are gonna start going up, and these fish are going in pre-spawn. Um, so this is definitely a killer bait for this time of year. 
um, and certainly right through summer and everything. The color on this one, let me find the package, um, deep sinking, subtle rattle. It is a two and a half inch, half ounce bait. The color on this is called Sandman. Now that is a good color for that other bait. It's that same brown. There's some slight little black hues in there. You can barely make out. Um, it's got a dark olive brown back to it and, uh, and a light whiter sandstone kind of biospawn image on there. Um, kind of bottom. Some clear translucent plastic. You can see kind of through. Uh, that's pretty cool. I'm so happy to have this. Um, I'm definitely going to enjoy seeing how this works comparative to the old standard uh, Bill Lewis rattle trap, which is my tried and true during my finesse winter and my spawn and post spawn. Uh, rattle traps catch them all year long, really. Uh, so I'm interested. I'm happy to get this. I'm also kind of happy to get the craw sound profile as opposed to the bait fish sound profile. Um, because I like, I like the idea of the subtler uh, single tap, double tap, rather than, um, you know, a large major rattling. I can go to a regular standard rattle trap or a high rattle, high pitch uh, square bill for that louder vibration speed fishing. Um, I tend to run my lipless cranks a little slower than most. If I want to rip, I go for jerk baits or I go for swim baits or I go for blade baits. That's just me. But that's cool. Uh, so the Biospawn Rattlebot Craw profile is uh, definitely an added collection or added bonus to my collection. I'm totally, totally stoked for that. Thank you very much. Next in this box, 10,000 Fishes uh, Cyclo Bait. Cycle Bait. So 10,000 Fishes Cycle Bait. Catch Co. again, and you'll see um, Biospawn. Um, the 10,000 Fishes, Googans, these are all Catch Co. products in a Catch Co. box. Just saying. So this is their spinner bait, the cycle bait. Uh, this one is a 3 8 ounce in the color black blue with a 4 aught hook. And it is a single willow leaf, um, excuse me, single Colorado leaf, leaf, single Colorado leaf. It's got a different design than a lot of spinner baits in that it has this like, I see these in cheap, cheap like lamps, these oversized like plastic, it's not plastic, it's just like thin, thin metal, cast metal, um, ringlets. You know, you'd see these in like the dangles for like really cheap lamps um, where you'd have the gems on the bottom. In this case, they have this really like cool custom Colorado. The Colorado, I'll spin this real slow, if you'll see, it's actually got a big cup. So this thing is going to have a ton of thump coming off of it because that's going to catch a crap ton of water. So I'm thinking this, this willow isn't just going to spin and vibrate. It's going to like whack, whack, whack through the water with that. And it's certainly, you know, with that, that style, I would think it's going to leave a bubble trail. Because you also have something, it doesn't have a spinner on it. It doesn't have a, uh, you know, uh, it's got these, these rings that'll lock up. So it'll spin for one direction and lock up, and then it'll spin the other direction, and these rings will lock up. So um, that's an interesting design. That's something I've never honestly seen before in a spinner bait. Um, big 4 aught hook, wire keeper uh, for, your, uh, for your soft plastics there. Um, black chrome painted hook, pretty good. Very flexible wire in the front, which is good because um, I tend to like a little bit more flex in these than the stiffer, heavier gauge wires because if you're ripping it through uh, logs or through, through brush, through grass, um, this can get caught up and you can still pull it free if you get hung up a little bit. Um, specifically with something like this, where this is not on a, a free spinning uh, ring, it's, it's, it's locked up the way it does. This is apt to catch in grass. So I honestly, as opposed to other spinner baits where I'm very comfortable throwing them through grass beds, throwing them through the weeds and through, um, you know, milfoil and things like that, 
Uh, this kind of a bait, I would be wary of doing. This would be more of an open water bait uh, for me personally. Um, just because of the idea that this would get gunged up with all that muck and mire uh, and in a very highly grassy lake and uh, basically lose the, uh, the action of the blade uh, just out of that happenstance. Plus potentially get hung up and non-retrievable. <laughs> and we don't like to lose our baits. That's pretty cool. So that's, a, that's another cool bait. Um, that'll be interesting to see what, it's, what it fishes like, especially with the blade the way that's designed. I'm sure it's going to give a, a very different vibration on the rod uh, that I'll feel in the, in the blank. Uh, I'll be interested to see what that feels like as comparative to standard um, spinning baits because I have a ton of spinning baits. Um, they're, they're actually, they're pairing it right there. There's their trailer idea. So that's pretty cool. Um, so a taper tail plastic like the Yodo worm, that's what they're saying to, to pair it with as opposed to like your heart tail or your paddle tail bait. Um, again, I'm probably saying that's, again, because of the way that they've designed the attachment points for that Colorado blade is if you put a paddle tail on it, that's a heck of a lot of turbulence. That blade doesn't free spin. That also adds a lot of turbulence. If you were to catch it at the right moment, a paddle tail thumping one direction, that blade locked up, I could see that thing just kind of flipping around and not running at all true. So that's why they want a straight trailer, um, something like the Yoda worm, so not you know something without a a flapping tail that can uh go against the the cupped willow leaf or I mean, cup colorado why do you say willow cupped colorado that they've got attached to this so that's it's an interesting design and i can see where they're coming off with the with the more finessey style trailers so there's that next up number five duck it we have a bd square bill from duck it baits so boy ducats, BD square bill, tournament grade katana hooks. This is a three to four foot diving, two and a half ounce uh, in citrus shad, which is a color I do have a lot of. Um, little square bill. So that's pretty cool. Not bad. Um, it's not a computer chip square bill. It's your standard flared square bill. I like those. Um, Citrus Shad's a good color, excellent color, um, especially in stained water because you're going to get the flash and you're going to have those little hints of yellow and blue and green uh, in muddy, muddy water. Um, you know, it's going to look more and more like a bluegill. So I like that, or a pumpkin seed. Um, let's see, what does it say here? Tested by four-time Bass Tour winner and Bassmaster Classic Champion Boyd Duckett. Of course, it's his baits designed. <laughs> Uh, pro chosen color combinations, eliminate guesswork, and blah, 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 blah. All right, so nothing nothing of great value from the uh, the sales pitch on the back. Um, but that said, not bad. Uh, I have tons and tons of citrus shad baits. I do like um, some of the features in the casting of this. Let's see what the hooks are like. Well, the hooks are stabbed through the cardboard, so that tells you something. They're at least somewhat sharp. Um, oh, yeah, I'd say they're... I'd say they're, they're pokey. Um, I do like this inset cut. So you've got the gill plate is represented here, 3D, and they've got little ears cut into it. Uh, again, that kind of a thing will, will then add some more wiggle to it as it, as it displaces the water either side. Uh, it probably also helps it run a little truer because it'll, again, create like a little vortex of water coming off of here uh, that'll run down the body. It's not quite a flat side. This time of year, I go for the flat side crankbaits, the flat side uh, uh, square bills. This is very narrow, so it has, I'm sure, a moderately narrow uh, wobble. But I definitely like flat sides with a very subtle shutter uh, as they're running at this time of year with this cold water temperature. Um, but that's interesting. Never have too many crankbaits in my, uh, my opinion. I love crankbaits. Uh, next up, Perfection Lures Short Hookup Shaky Heads. Oh, this is my arch enemies, uh, enemy. So, David Dudley, not a fan of him. Great fan of his stand-up 
shaky heads, his stand-up uh, shaky head jigs are freaking awesome. I mean, kudos, kudos. He's a bit of a blowhard. He never uh, starts or, or fails to start or end a sentence in how much money he's made. Um, I'm grateful that he's gotten over his COVID. He uh, contracted the virus. But that being said, dude, who cares? <laughs> you know, like, anyway, um, these are awesome, awesome shaky heads. They always stand up, guaranteed those little alien antennae feet are awesome amazing hard hard bottom fishing with a very sensitive rod and braid or fluoro where that the littlest subtlest ticks will come up and resonate in your palm these little feelers if you high stick and you're dragging it across the bottom you can literally mentally figure out what the contours and the topography of the underwater surface is if you have a, a very well packed uh, hard surface bottom lake. Um, obviously in mud, no. Um, grassy, no. But uh, in those situations, beyond that ability to feel tactic, tactile uh, sense of what's under there, these things, every time you drop them, those little feet come down and it just rests and these things will settle up every time. One of the best, if not the best, shaky head uh, uh, jigs for craws. I, every soft plastic craw I own, I throw uh, on, on some of these. So uh, this one is the quarter ounce in green pumpkin. Obviously a good color, um, blends naturally. They also put lizards on these. I've never run a lizard on this. I've always, every time I've done a lizard bait, I've Texas rigged it, it's just me, um, or Carolina rigged it. Um, but for finesse worms and craws and uh, flukes, and I, I've done this. I've never done grubs. I've never done uh, lizards, and I've never done tubes on this. Although it does show a tube, I, I use tube jigs. I just use tube jigs. I wouldn't use this on a tube. Just come out with a tube jig that's sort of reversed, where maybe, but yeah. Uh, anyway, cool. David Dudley. Kudos to your input in this design, uh, but, uh, you know, don't be such a, such a pompous jackass about your finances, because it, easy come, easy go. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> Alrighty, next up, we have uh, Biwa Prism. So, Biwa, 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 Biwa. Biwa Prism. So these are high density stick baits, a 10 pack of 3.8 inch. Uh, they call them prisms probably because they're either square or they're eight sided and they don't want to get into a legal battle with the Ochos. So let us take one out and see how many facets this has. This. Has this. <laughs> Look at that. Two, four, six. So. Oh, yep, six sides. Okay, so you're not an Ocho. Definitely oily. Green pumpkin color. Green pumpkin, 10-pack. Very, very, very oily. You can see the sheen coming off my fingers, and this is the only oily bait I've touched so far. It's on top of my fingers instead, just from pulling out of the package. Um, green pumpkin, you got some black flake in there. Um, again, eight-sided. Each, uh, each segment, it's segmented with a little rip down... You can see those little faceted sides and the little dips down the side of it. Tapered at one end, a little thicker on the other. Awesome for winter uh, fishing. Definitely finesse jigs. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nico rigged this. Certainly would try. Um, I would like to see something like this in a 10 inch or a 6 inch because a faceted item like this for wacky rigging. Those flat sides as they're going through the water are going to rock because it's going to want to get the water's going to want to get away from the flat edge and roll it to a to a V so that the, so it can sink better, um, and certainly it'll catch and flutter uh, with those faceted sides. So anytime you have a flat bait, uh, if it's like a flat pour, you have a round side and you have a flat side. If you want more roll, go for the round side down, the flat side up. Your hook would be up. If you're going to wacky rig it and you want more of a flutter, 
more more sporadic, erratic uh, action, go with the flat side down and the round side up, and it'll displace water in a different way, and you'll get a totally different uh, action on the bait as it's sinking through the water column. So Biwa, um, I think it's French. French design for tournament anglers. So then it's probably not Biwa, because that sounds more like, uh, like a Japanese thing. Biwa, made in the United States. Okay, it's got Japanese writing up here. Okay, French design, Japanese writing, made in America. Gotta love the global economy. <laughs> Next up, uh, three more to go. We have a net baits dagger, so that are these, yeah. These, I think, I, I definitely have these. So I like these. These are four and a half inch in the Alabama Craw. Awesome for those uh, shaky heads. Um, it's like a finesse beaver craw bait. So this has anise scent to it. You've got these little tiny appendages that displace water, and they are on both, both planes, top and bottom. Um, it's got a fin down the middle like the um, chase baits. I, I really, really want the chase. What's the bug they call it? They have the two. They have the, it's basically a squid imitation. It's got the little flutes as it flows down, and they have a they have the salt water, which is the squid, which is a larger profile. Then they have a smaller profile, similar to this, which they're using to kind of branch into the freshwater market. Um, but that thing is, I, I, I got to get those. I, I got to do, I just have to get them. I just haven't, but I got to get them. Um, but you've got this thin plastic flutter uh, fin, and then you've got these little ridges on the outside that'll displace water. You've got two paddles, similar to your... Uh, to your trench hogs and, and what have you. And then you've got this beaver tail that splits apart to give you a craw flutter imitation. So you can go from a beaver bait for punching to a craw bait on a shaky head for finessing. Um, you can rig this because it's got enough meat this way. You can rig this uh, as a as a fishtail swim bait um, trailer, you know, for a, for a swimming jig or what have you. Or you can wing, rig it flat sided. Uh, for that action, up and down, again, for the beaver tail style action. Again, great baits. Craw, uh, Bama Craw, awesome, awesome color, Alabama Craw. Um, I love any, let's do something really quick. I like any bait that has an orange to it. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of something that's going into the, uh, the giveaway, by the way. So, um, let me reach up here and grab it. So something that I really think you should have on your boat, in your tackle bag, regardless of whether you know it or not. So this right here is not a flashlight. It's a black light. So everybody loves black lights, right? Especially if you have old shag carpet. Um, let's see if this will work. Okay. So I'm going to dim the lights. The cool thing about this is... You look at this, and it's got an orange hue on this Bama Craw. So let's drop these lights off one at a time here. And I'm going to show you the beauty of what fish see. Because fish see in a, um, like a red-green spectrum. So where you see something that's like a dull, muted, mustard orange, when you hit this with the black light, it starts coming up brilliant orange yellow all right so these colors become far more vibrant i know it's hard to tell in the camera but they become far more vibrant and fluoresce under um the black light which is a, a color combo that the fish will see so here you have a, a orangey red head for this ned rig and then you hit it and you see it literally glows fire engine red just under the black light. So what you see is this, what the fish see is that. That's like a beacon in the night. So these little little tiny orange net heads in stained and muddy water, ultraviolet lights coming through, these things glow like a high beam telling the fish, oh, what's that moving over there? So these are ways that you can, can call in fish um, using these kinds of uh, items. Um, so something that I'm going to add into my Christmas in July 
is this guy right here, which is a uh, handy dandy uh, Grizzly Gears um, UV black light flashlight. So that you'll be able to take this. I do the same thing with my dip and dies, my, uh, my spike it, um, you know, just to see what I can do and where I can um, add a little flash. I, you know, like I said uh, in press past episodes, if you have highlighters, you can scrub some highlighter on something. Uh, cover it over with a little bit of super glue so that protects it from the water washing it off and then you have like a little dot of red or a bloodline of red and then the highlighter will fluoresce under UV so this is going into that Christmas in July packet to the uh, to the lucky lucky uh, winner whoever that may be uh, it's to me it's an it's one of those unknown unseen unthought about little uh, tools to have in your tackle bag uh, just to keep around. So it's cool to see that this also reacts somewhat in the regular, in the black light. Um, not all baits do that. It, some plastisols don't fluoresce uh, their colors, their dyes in their plastisols. Um, sometimes, and what I've noticed in many, many baits in certain brands, you might have a red uh, color scheme to your naked eye. When you put it under the black light, it might glow yellow or orange. Or you might have a purple and it glows bright white under UV. Uh, depending on what the color that is reflected in that spectrum uh, and what is absorbed. So the purple in the UV would be absorbed, but the white in the, uh, in the UV uh, violet, the lighter violet, is, uh, is reflected. So even though it's purple to you, it's white to the fish. So these kinds of things are really cool to learn um, just as an added benefit to being a, a little bit more knowledgeable um, angler. Two more to go. Daggers are really cool baits, by the way. Um, Biospawn Exo Swim. So these are another Biospawn product. These are four inch little Kitek style swim baits, paddle tails. Again, from what I see, although I say Shop Carl's probably added these just based on the color comparison to go together. I, I'm still going to err on the side that this cup would act indifferently um, with these paddle tails. If I was to put this trailer on this, I would do what Tactical Bassin uh, suggested, what I've done before, which is you cut off the paddle itself, just leaving that, that attachment point. So you cut off this paddle and just leave the V here and have that flat razor's edge of plastic behind, and that'll match up a little bit better. That's primarily a technique for using chatterbaits to get rid of the, the, the way that the, the turbulence and the, the, um, the um, hydrodynamics, because it's not very aerodynamic, it, it causes draft, it causes the water to hold it back, and that, that holdback of, of the chatterbait would mess up because of those paddles. It doesn't rhythm it. It doesn't follow the same rhythmic pattern as the chatterbait spinning out in front and this lumbering tail on the back. It just doesn't work. So uh, Tactical Bassin, um, I later found they, they suggested the same thing. Cut that off. Um, you know, snip it off with your snips or use a razor blade like I've always done, and just uh, discard your soft plastic into your pin and then melt it back down for another baits later. Biospawn four inch Exo Swims. The color on that probably blue crystal. Blue red pearl. I don't see the red. They call it blue red pearl. Um, I'm guessing there's a little bit of pink in there, so they're, I guess they got some hue of red to it, so that's why they call it the red pearl. I just call it blue pearl, but I'm not making the bait, so it's up to them. And lastly, another package of, of Shop Carl's uh, bait company item from Stickies. They're Stickies 3 uh EWG worm hooks three hooks to a package so that's pretty cool you've got your worm hooks for the craws or for the by uh, biwas you've got the preset nico kit you've got the swim trailers with again you got three odd hooks you could use these on the swim trailers or you could attempt to put them on that uh, cycle bait you've got the googly eyes for the craws which i would definitely go with you got a crankbait, you got a lipless crankbait, a square bill. Again, another bang in box. Uh, tons to choose from for the different water columns. 
good natural color profiles. Another impressive bait. Um, tell me what you think of box 70, was it 76? 76, box 76. Give me, uh, give me your opinions. Do you think this was a good box? I'm loving that Rattlebot. Uh, I still don't like the idea of them trying to pawn it off as, uh, you know, 16 different baits. It's really two, you know, it's really one. Craw is the same build as the, as the, uh, bait fish. It's just a diddle, different sound profile. But, uh, beyond that, I love the, the design of it. I love the idea of it. Um, and I'm happy with getting the lower, uh, double tap, or, you know, the two tap style, the lighter thud. So, uh, you tell me, what did you think? Is this, uh, impressive or not? And I will keep maybe doing one of these every month. So this is February. I did one two or two or three weeks ago, which would still have been in January. Uh, maybe I'll pick up one for March. We'll see. Um, thanks as always for spending a little time with me and, uh, from me to you, keep your lines tight and, uh, I'll catch you guys on the next cast. Uh, peace hookaholics. For the victory lap though. Whoa, whoa. They ain't never seen nothing.